Hello everybody, welcome to today's reaction video. Today we've had a request. So we're gonna be um, reviewing an album by Coldplay. So let me share the screen and show you the request here. So it's this bit here. Um, so thank you to Scrambled59 for the request. Um, so he's told us why he or she um, has told us why that they've gone for this album so the reason why I've chosen this album is because recently I've been listening to a lot of Coldplay and for some reason this album clicked although I think Viva La Vida is their best album for some reason X and Y just clicked with me and has and has ended up as my favorite Coldplay album. Maybe it's the philosophical lyrics, maybe it's the rock feel, but this album just scratches a certain itch. So, um, Brett, let me go over to you then. So, Coldplay, what, are you a fan? Yeah, for me personally, I am. I know Coldplay gets a lot of criticism um, right. from a right. number of people. Yeah, there's a lot of people who um, find them boring or think they've been going on too long. Or I, I think it's also more of a thing, more like the lead singer Chris Martin. Just I think they just probably don't like him, whatever reason it, it may be. So yeah, they probably do get sort of a lot of criticism there. But I think I, that's it. The songs I do know of theirs, and again, like with most bands, um, I, I know their main big hit is their back catalogue that I probably I'm, I'm not that familiar with. And songs of them that I do know and I do like, I, I really do do like them. And that's they've been going on for such a long time, and they still produce some pretty good stuff. Um, so I'm actually quite looking forward to because again for. For a lot of the songs I, of those I do know, and I say I don't know the back cut from, I've, I've never listened to um, a Coldplay album before. Um, I've only ever listened to the songs or hits that, that I know. So um, really quite intrigued to see what their not hits uh, are, are generally like, if they're on par or if they're something totally different or quite experimental or... Um, mm. To not not good at all, and it's only the hits so the good ones there. So yeah, I'd be quite really quite um, intrigued. Not trying to build it up, and I'm not think it'd be absolutely amazing, but you know, just definitely more of an intrigued um, um, listen for me. I think it's going to be. Yeah, like you, I've never listened to a Coldplay album, so I am intrigued by this. Um, a little bit like with Queen, how you know I know, I know quite a few the major queen hits but i've never listened to an album before until we did the album review um i'm not a huge fan of coldplay um for me they've got a lot of what i would call listenable hits so if it comes on the on the radio you know i'll, I'll probably listen to it i might not necessarily change the channel to find another station to see if there's another song on. i might keep it on but i won't don't overly enjoy it. The exception being Yellow. I absolutely love Yellow. Um, but other than Yellow, from what I from what I can think of, there isn't really another Coldplay song that I think that I really like. Um, but as I said, there's lots of listenable songs on there that I don't mind. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what the album brings. Um, I've had a look at the album. I don't know if you've seen it. I'm going to share the screen now. Um, so it's the third album of theirs released back in 2005. I mean, I, I like that period of time, by the way. Um, we were, we would have been um, at college at the time. Good period. Um, so it's a, quite a long album, 62 minutes, 30 seconds, over an hour. Genre is on Wikipedia is classed as space rock, ambient electronic rock. And as for the songs themselves, um, so let me just scroll down. Here we go. 
So the only song that I'm aware of here that I recognize is Fix You, which is a song that my dad likes, <laughs> as I found out recently. Um, Speed of Sound, that rings a bell. I think I know that as well. Pretty sure I know Speed of Sound. Um, what about you, Brett? Um, in, in terms of what the tracks that I recognize and know. Yeah, mean? yeah. Yeah, so Fix You is one of their more popular, more famous, well, we'll say popular, but one of the more famous songs. Um, Talk, um, I know as well. Mm. Um, and it's funny, Space Rock, we came up there. I've, I've never heard of Space Rock before. I'm quite sure of that. And I think Talk, from what I remember of it, does, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to picture Space Rock, but when I picture the song Talk, I do think of, I, I could imagine this, where the Space um, Rock actually is. And Speed of Sound, I know as well. I think you might recognise we heard it. I think it's quite well known. And it's actually one of my, Definitely one of my more favourite um, Coldplay songs of theirs. Yeah, speed, uh, speed of Sound, I, I know. I, I, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I said, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they said, so, yeah, this, uh, I said Space Rock is a more sort of quite intriguing type thing. But I said, when I think of, you know, Speed of Sound and Talk, yeah, I, I, I do picture Space Rock, even though I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I, I, it's a really hard one to really explain. I can probably... I can see maybe why the, the, the um, scrambled who made the comments, I don't know, it's still been made a comment for it, really. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, my head's already it's going crazy already thinking on this space rock side thing already. Yeah, it's a bit of sound. I'm, I'm picturing it in my head. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier. It's like one of those songs that I don't mind it, but I just don't like it enough to say that I like it, if that makes sense. But I don't know, maybe yeah, I'll, listen to, I'll listen to it again. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's one of those also that it doesn't get played often enough on. I think it's just probably gets forgotten about because I think there's other bigger main songs that people might always associate with Coldplay, like, for example, Yellow and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I'm actually no, I'm really quite looking forward to this one, I think. Yeah, I, I may know talk as well. Like, if you if you know it and it's been a big hit, I'll, I'll probably know it as well. I just don't recognise it from the, the title. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well, actually. Um, no, I've noticed as well the songs are all quite long they're all over four minutes apart from one of them which is almost four minutes so Copa obviously likes their longer sort of songs um but yeah yeah I think they're quite nice if you think about it I think most Coldplay songs I, I would always think of them being about yeah that sort of four to five minute mark they don't do you know catchy pop no two minute three minute songs um, they do do some good pop songs, but like I said, they're not, they're more complex than that. I think they're more artistic than being mm. poppy, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, well, yeah, looking forward to this one, actually. Um, so we'll, be, we'll go off now and uh, review it. And then we'll be back with you guys in just a couple of seconds. So we've now listened to X and Y by Coldplay. And um, Brett, do you want to tell us what, what you thought of it first? Yeah, I'll go try and give it a go. Um, I was really fascinated when we were doing the preview um, of this album. I remember we were talking about it, this all space rock kind of genre, which I never really heard the expression before. Um, and now whether that, you know, was playing in the back of my mind, but this <laughs> felt like a space rock album, even though I've never heard of one. And there's other albums which I've, which I've heard which sound familiar. And I've always had this image of sort of space rock, but never sort of, sort of put the two together. So I'm really intrigued to look more about, you know, how space rock came about and who decided it, who came up with it first, because this felt like a, a space rock album um i really liked it um i did say so I, I do like coldplay um it, it's just one of those albums which is just a, and i've said the term before it's not a great term where it's just a nice album again there was no songs that like absolutely wowed me away apart from the ones i knew i didn't think there was anything that was really bad on there it was just a just one of those ones you could just put on listen to relax daydream away, not think too much about into it and just feel nice and relaxed. It's just a feel good, nice album to listen to. Um, 
yeah, I said I found the songs the same as in on par, as in I said nothing was outstanding, amazing, nothing was really, really bad. There was a little bit of variety, um, but not massively, I thought, in some regards. And yeah, I said, good one to listen to, happily would listen to it again. Um, so yeah, thumbs up, I guess, overall from, from Backstreet Brett. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, um, the comments I, I put here. So I enjoyed reviewing the album, even if I wasn't overly keen on a lot of the songs, um, which I think I've said before with, with other albums as well, where I kind of have enjoyed actually listening to it and reviewing it, even though there are quite a few songs there that I'm not particularly keen on. And it's the same for this one. Um, however, the last four songs really took me by surprise, apart from one out of those last four, um, in a good way. Um, so I thought the album offered quite a bit of variety. Um, and I found myself enjoying some of the non-releases, or at least I think they were non-releases, or, um, or ones I hadn't heard of, more than the, their more well-known release songs. Um, so it was a bit of a mixed bag, but I have got some interesting comments to make regarding, I think, regarding some of these songs, particularly towards the end. Um, so yeah let's go through it then so the first song then was uh called square one um so i put it had a spacey feel it's not probably not the right not proper english word i don't know spacey but you know had a, you know like a space feel to it um again i might have been influenced because i'd read on wikipedia that it was space rock but i, I do generally think it did feel like this kind of space kind of sound um, and then the instrumentals kind of you know began took off and I've sort of described it as sort of like space pop rock there was no catchy chorus I found it quite almost like a taboo word quite intense um, <laughs> um, had potential but it didn't progress how I'd hoped it would so like the kind of parts of it I'd li I liked, but then it never really kind of happened for me. I would have preferred it if it had been less intense at the last part of the song towards the end of it. So yeah, it was all right. Um, yeah, so as you said there, I, I, we need to find a word for it rather than spacey, but um, yeah, this felt like a space track. I, I just can't explain it. Um, it's one of those you have to listen to yourself and it, it's weird. You can't help but listen to that and not think of being in space, thinking of the universe. Really, really, mm. I really, really um, enjoyed it. And that's why I thought it was a really good sort of opening track. I agree. It was a bit more rockier, especially with a lot compared to a lot of the other songs. So actually it could be better in the middle of the album. Um, but in terms of giving this whole sort of space universe feel, I thought it was fantastic. I've also put here, um, kind of feel like a bit like Pink Floyd's. So again, it was a bit, not psychedelic the same as Pink Floyd was, but a bit, you know, trying to create this sort of feeling that you're getting there. And even the album cover itself kind of looked like um, Dark Side of the Moon had that same sort of appeal um, to it. So yeah, I generally thought a really good sort of opening track, even if it did go, it was a bit more of a rocky version of, of Coldplay, um, but absolutely loving the sort of space feeling you get from it which is so I don't know how that sort of came about and it's really really good yeah I, I also kind of noticed a kind of Pink Floyd influence on the album I, I may I can't remember I may have made some notes and about Pink Floyd later I'm not sure but yeah I definitely agree with that um, the next one then was what if it's a, a slow a slow one so far um, I'm sort of questioning is it gonna you know develop and take off like part of it actually reminded me of Elton John. Sorry, mm. there's a, a small mm. part of it that did. Um, then, it was, then it reminded me of, a, of another song, but I couldn't quite remember the name of it because it's kind of bugging me a little bit. But anyway, now it has taken off, and but not not in an, an intense way, unlike the previous song, Square One. That, that was quite very intense. This is kind of, you know, 
got going, but not in that same kind of way. Um, not overly, this is an interesting kind of discussion point. So uh, I believe the singer is, is Chris Martin, right? He's a lead singer, right? So I'm not overly keen on his high pitched voice, which he, which he does a lot on his song, on those, on those songs. Um, yeah, during parts of this song and other songs. Yeah, I'm kind of, I don't mind his singing voice in general, but when he kind of does that high pitched thing, I don't know, it doesn't really work for me. Anyway, now it's really livened up towards the end. And I just classed it as an average, average song. Um, yeah, I think I agree. We love the points um, that you made there. So this is one of the more sort of cold play where it's the piano is the main focus. And so I kind of felt at the start it was like a slower, nicer version of the song just before, and it felt a bit more meaningful than the other one. Um, I, said, I, can't remember, I didn't write any lyrics down, but I, don't, I just had that feeling of it, it was more focused on the, the lyrics rather than sort of music. I even made a note here about also Coldplay when he, speak, when he's, when he sings quite high. Um, and funny enough, I wondered if you actually enjoy those bits of it, because I know a lot of people don't. Um, I can take it or leave it, but um, yeah, I can see why people sometimes don't enjoy that part. When he's normally singing, it's absolutely fine. Um, I put here, it's now feeling a bit less like a space feel, but more like a dream, got a sort of floating sort of dream feel to it as well. And then I've put Beatles, the ending was very similar to what the Beatles were probably doing back in the day as well, sort of getting, just giving this sort of dream um, effect there. So whether there was a song, a Beatles songs that you may have felt from this one as well, I think I refer to another Beatles song on a later one, but um, yeah, definitely, you know, got you thinking and it felt more sort of an emotion, not emotional, uh, a more deep, meaningful song than the other one. So then we moved on to um, White Shadows. I felt this had a, a kind of slight indie feel to it. Um, and I quite like the peak of this, which was like the chorus of the song. It took me by surprise. Um, because I guess, I think you mentioned it actually in the in, 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 in the introduction or off camera, I can't remember, about Coldplay not really sort of being too big with their choruses. It's not, that, not really that sort of music. But I thought this one did have a quite a, I wouldn't say catchy chorus, but a good chorus to it. Um, I just felt the balance was better with this song. It wasn't overly intense, but yet it wasn't too slow and dreary either. And this, yeah, definitely the best so far out of those first three songs by some distance and a nice ending as well to boot and I think when we actually look at the rest of the songs this is definitely right up there possibly my favorite song on the out on the whole album I've only listened to it the once so I would need to listen to it again um, but yeah I, I like this one quite a lot Ooh, okay wow, cool um, yeah so kind of adding on to what you were saying there again which I sort of agree with so I found this one Again, sort of a nice mixture between the first one and the second one. First one being more rocky, the second one being more slower. I mean, for this, sort of had a nice blend there in the middle. And yeah, I think Coldplay, they are sort of pop, pop rock. But like I said, not in the same way. It's like catchy pop songs. I think more recently they probably do, but back then it's more about sort of the deep meaning of writing and stuff there. But yeah, this was actually quite a, a nice one. Um, Almost a bit here. Um, I said, yeah, it did have sort of a catch chorus, but for me, it just wasn't that memorable or that likable to compare to some of the other ones from there. But I said it was a nice mix between the two, and then I really, what I really liked is how it sort of then um, blended in, emerging into the next song, which we're um, about to speak to, which again is something that Pink Floyd and also the Beatles have done previously as well. Yeah, so "Fix You" it's obviously a well-known song. Um, so it has that. <laughs> That really that slow start with, with his annoying high voice and just finding it hard to just like that high pitched voice of his. But I mean, the song is quite nice, especially like the the lights will guide you home part. That particular line mm. is, is, the, is the bit that kind of touches me, the bit that, I, that really stands out for me. And then the sort of the instrumentals begun. Like, See, I know, I know the song quite well, it's a famous song, but it's not bad. Um, it did have a different elements to it. 
I think that was quite noticeable. You know, you had to start off, start off with that the sort of high pitched voice, slow part, and then um, there's a long instrumental part. So there was different parts to it. I've never been a, like a particularly big fan of this song, and my dad likes it, but it's all right. I, I don't I don't mind it. Um, yeah, funny enough, just like you, I've, I've also um, never been the massive fan of this song. I've always heard people say the Coldplay they absolutely love this song, but for me, I always thought of other Coldplay songs that I've generally preferred before before this one. Um, but there's no doubt it. it is actually a really good song, and you sort of break it down to everything about it, the lyrics, the meaning, um, the sort of slow instrumental style, then the instrumental bit, and then the sort of uplifting bit to go around again. It's hard for, if you know the song, to sort of not try and want to sing along with it um, as well. It has grown on me. I, I, I do appreciate it a lot more than I did before. And I think it's a very fitting song for the album, the way it's what the whole album is. Um, so, yeah, I said I've, I've got more respect for it now um, than I probably did before. So the next one was Talk. I was kind of looking out for this song because I remember you saying in the introduction that you knew this song and it was you know one of the released songs. So, because I didn't recognise it from the name. So I was wondering, because I, I thought I was probably going to know it if it's a released song that's been on, you know, on the radio and stuff. So, yeah, it came on, sounded familiar. And yes, I do know it. But not overly familiar with it. Um, I don't know. Possibly, maybe not one of their bigger hits. Maybe that they release. I'm not sure. But um, to me, the, I remember saying to you in the, in, the, in the introduction that with Coldplay, I kind of can listen to them. Like I wouldn't necessarily change the radio station if I was if a song came on, but I wouldn't. I would particularly like the song that much. And I think this is typical of that. This is <laughs> that sort of song where. Um, yeah, listen, listenable on the radio, but nothing more. The chorus part isn't bad. It hasn't got the high voice, at least. The last couple of minutes of the song felt quite different to the first part of the song. So I kind of felt, I don't know if I want to say the word disjointed. That might be a little bit harsh, but it did seem to have different parts to it. Like Fix You had different parts, but it all went together quite well. Whereas this, no, I'm not so sure. So yeah, it was, it was, it was okay. Nothing, nothing better, no, nothing more. Um, yeah, um, again, really, really good valid points that you make there. Um, as you're right, yeah, it's a it's a song that was released. It did fairly well, but again, it's not one that people most associate when it comes to Coldplay. And I think it probably doesn't get the much play time that it probably does. Um, I've always liked it. Again, it's never been that bit. I've never been high um, sort of on my list. Again, I, I find the song fits in well with the album, and I still get that kind of space feel with this one. Not as much as, as the first one, but I definitely get that sort of feel to it there. Um, I, I totally get when you're saying that yeah, it's got these different variations to it, but it feels a bit more disjointed than something like Fix You. And I never really noticed that until you kind of sort of mentioned it and think back to it, because I know it fairly well, and I go, oh, yeah, actually, you're probably right. It does, it does, I do get what you mean. But overall, again, I still like the song. I'm still happily listening. It's exactly what you're saying there, like on the radio. We never change the channel because it's on, but also you just sort of take it for 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 what it is. And again, it's it's not maybe necessarily overly memorable. It has a chorus. It's kind of catchy, but not catchy enough to be like a real poppy rock song. So again, a good solid uh, song for for the album. But I do like it. Yeah, then we had an X and Y, so it had the, like a, a high pitched speaking so far at the beginning. I don't, I, do you know I didn't like. I didn't like the the ooh 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 part. I'm sure it didn't sound like that, but I've got the that's how I've written it down. Ooh ooh ooh. Yeah, I, I don't really like that in songs when they start making those silly sounds. Um, didn't really work for me. Uh, I described it as having a kind of lazy feel to it. That's just you know the style, just a kind of slow space pop rock kind of song fairly average nothing to shout about and i've had a kind of orchestra ending which is quite nice um yeah so that orchestra ending again relates to sort of the beatles kind of vibe to it there um and so i've already used the word lazy i've kind of still put like that sort of a dreamy kind of falling asleep kind of song again that sort of space floating dream sort of feel to it well 
Um, I, I like the vibe to it. And again, very fitting for this album, this whole sort of space rock kind of um, album feel to it. Um, but I say it's just one of the more sort of average songs on the album. It just fits in well for what the album is it, it's all about, really. So then we had Speed of Sound, which is one of their well-known songs. Um, probably haven't heard it for a while, so it's good to listen to it. Um, so as the song builds up, the high voice pops up, which obviously <laughs> don't particularly like. Uh, it's not bad, this one. I mean, I'd say out of the three released songs or the three songs that I already knew, um, it, it's at a similar standard to Fix You and probably slightly better than, than Talk. So, yeah, I, I'd have it up there with, 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 with Fix You. I don't know which one I'd say is better for me, but I'd have to listen to it again. But yeah, it's, it's, it's all right, this one. I don't mind it. Yeah, so it's one that I, 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 I knew beforehand. Um, this is one of my favourite sort of Coldplay songs. I don't know why, because again, it, it's very standard Coldplay where it can be seen as a bit boring and not. it, it sort of feels like it should go up a bit, but it, it never, never excels enough. It just kind of stays the same. But yeah, I, I still really like it. It's one of my favourites um, on the album. Um, bar a couple that we're going to go on to a thing which I, I didn't know about um, does it fit well with this album for me probably not and I don't know why it, it still it has the sort of space for, but not in the same way as the, the other ones so like I said for me because I, I know the song well I've always really liked it and I still do haven't felt any less about it from here and it would still be one of my favourite songs um, on the album for me personally so next up was a message had a nice acoustic start to it. I felt there were less instrumentals on this one than, than the other songs. So it didn't feel as rocky, so softer to listen to. Um, so I appreciate the change of style. However, as the song kind of went on, uh, it did. I guess <laughs> maybe I'm contradicting myself here, but it did seem to have a kind of rocky, rocky feel to it after all. So. Yeah, it was, it was still fairly average. So yeah, it's a really nice sort of chill, sort of relaxing feel to it. Um, I actually really like this one. This surprised me. Not surprised me because I didn't know anything about it, as in uh, I really quite like this one. And again, we got back to this sort of space thing, and again, it's really hard to think how it feels so space-like. Um, I've put here, this film's very Coldplay, but also quite U2-like as well. Um, and we had a bit of instrumental and I really felt this image, you know, of trying to get a message across in space. Like I, said, I don't know what the meaning of the song is. And I said, I didn't look too deep into the lyrics, but just by the title and this listen to it, that's kind of sort of the feel and vibe I got to it here. I've also put here, this would be a really nice song if you're driving on like sort of an open road type thing. You can imagine just enjoy driving to this one. Again, as I said, you don't take too much in. It's just a nice relaxing song that, just just sort of chill out to really mm -hmm. so then we had low there wasn't really much to this song really i just find, found it a bit one paced and boring it was also the longest song on the album but they were they were pretty similar length anyway um I kind of found maybe felt it had some elements of 90s brit pop to it I didn't like the change, the change up in the middle of the song. I just didn't think it worked. Um, I actually thought that it made the song worse. And just overall, wasn't a fan of this one. Yeah, I haven't got a lot to say on this one. Um, just I put it here, so it felt like a faster version of the song we've just listened to. But for me, it just didn't feel like it. I think I was still thinking, enjoying the song previously. So I really didn't take this one on too much there. Um, I had the sort of Coldplay singing notes from there. But I did say here, again, it's probably a, a nice, good song that fits in with the album. So, again, nothing against it. It wasn't awful. Just a nice one, but probably just not as good as some of the other songs we've listened to. Okay. So, <laughs> if you remember the introduction, I said the last four songs, apart from one, um, kind of took my interest. So, I think up to this point, especially after that song Live, which I didn't like, I was kind of getting a bit tired of the album, to be perfectly honest. I wasn't re really enjoying it that much. A few okay songs, as I've already said. Um, 
but this next song kind of uh, changed things up really so it's called the hardest part I, I, and yeah so i quite like the sound of it so far as, as i was writing this at the time just nice and pleasant has a different feel to it i'd say not not typical coldplay has quite a simple but catchy beat the singing kind of flows which isn't always the case with coldplay even i'd say it has a a kind of slight country feel to it and i thought this song was right up there with white shadows so yeah this is a this is a good one this cool um yeah actually i haven't written a lot for this one here um main thing i was focused on it, it sounded really familiar so i don't know if it was a release song that i just wasn't familiar with or not a copy because i don't think it was a copy of a song but it sounded familiar to like another song so i think that was still playing in my mind a lot more than song but otherwise I, I did like it for here it felt again like a really nice song kind of cold play not so much spacey but again it did feel like a, a good song for the this particular album um and i think I've, oh yeah i mean little no here said i think at this part i think i'll probably want to listen to the album again just to really get a sort of a good feel um for these ones here but yeah i'm surprised myself like really liking those two songs you've said so far really yeah i've just checked on wikipedia so my dad actually knew this song, so I wonder how he knew it then. Does that mean it's been released? So it has been released, but oh, it was okay. released, yeah, um, as the fourth single from X and Y. It was released as a radio-only song on United, oh, radio, okay. United Kingdom radio stations. Yeah, I, I guess, like yeah, you've probably heard it before if you said it was familiar, but I don't think yeah. I, I didn't recognise it. It was, it was a new song for me. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I recognise, but like not enough to say, oh, this must have been a release. I just, just, yeah. you know, maybe it was released, but I, I couldn't picture. I wouldn't have known the title. But yeah, it, 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 for some reason, different. So maybe it's just been like one time, one or two times being on the radio and just being in the back of my head or something. But yeah, nice song. Then we had "Swallowed in the Sea," very softly sung so far. And now the instrumentals have, have come, have come in, but it, it's nice and calm, and it also like the last song, Hardest Part, doesn't have that kind of typical Coldplay feel to it. And again, one of the better songs on the album. Yeah, I really like this one. So I've put here Snow Patrol. It sounds very familiar. And that's and Snow so Patrol very similar to Coldplay. And I think we like with this particular song, that's like Snow Patrol and Coldplay, it's not so much thinking, it's almost like, um, I think like trying to, it's almost like telling a story um so the mo more focuses on the lyrics and such rather than the music and just again not that i look too much into the, the meaning of the lyrics or pick them all up but you can just sense the feeling there and again just a really nice sort of feel to it so yeah put it very noughties um brit pop uh the snow patrol was a real sort of thing to imagine them doing the same sort of song um and again just a really nice one to have in the background yeah so i really like really like this one okay um, so the next one, um, so give me a second, um, it's Twisted Logic. So you mentioned earlier about elements of Pink Floyd. So this is where I did, I do actually have my Pink Floyd, uh, notes here. So sounds like Pink Floyd, slow, not enjoying it. Something doesn't work for me. Feels a bit experimental, but not overly, only slightly. It's a it's a bit like dour for me, like a bit kind of uh, I don't know. It has that kind of negative feel to it or something. I just I don't like the sound and the singing style. It gets quite rocky towards the end. I, I'll probably describe it as the most epic track on the album as well in terms of the sound of it and everything. It feels quite dramatic, but yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> Shame. Um, yeah, um, I think again our classic line of you know the experimental song of the album. This potentially is the closest one um, to it. So you've put Pink Floyd. I've put here Beatles, but I'd, it is the Beatles type, as in when they're doing their more again not psychedelic, but they're more sort of experimental and a bit more exploring with their their music. And that, there was one particular song of the Beatles. Um, not to make this into a Beatles thing here, um, called "I Want You." which sounds exactly like it. It sounded like there was elements of that were taken from that. Um, so if anyone wants to check out that song as well and see what they think linked to that one. Um, and then we go back to sort of the spacey feel to it. And yeah, it's a bit more sort of 
<laughs> I put the I word intense bit here, but halfway slowly getting a bit more sort of intense um, stuff there. Again, it fits with the sort of space rock feel of there, um, but from the previous song and the potential to the next song, it just it wasn't um, as good. But um, again, a, a good song again for the album. Yeah, so we finished off with Till Kingdom Come. Nice start this one. Quite liking it so far. Has a country slash Irish feel to it. Um, and it's just a really decent song. And just a great end to the album. So again, this is another song that I did like. And it would also be, yeah, one of the definitely one of the, the, the best songs. Not the best, probably, but one of the best songs on the album. Yeah, this one really grew on me um, as I was listening through to it. And I would have to say, I would probably put it as one of my favourite ones um, on the album. Again, had that sort of acoustic feel. Um, again, we said sort of the Irish feel as well. And again, just a really nice, relaxing, to sort of switch off and just enjoy listening to it without thinking too much um, into it. Um, and again, I back in, you know, from driving on a nice open road, it would just be a fantastic song to... Um, to listen to um and yeah this one i said it took me by surprise and i'll probably put it up there as one of my favorites um on the album and a great, great way for me personally to to end it really well it was a shame because it ended a little bit on a high and then i felt like that's why i said i felt like i could listen to um the whole album again just to to go back on it really okay so that concludes our album review of coldplay x and y so just to sum up for me, yeah, I'm glad I've I finally listened to a Coldplay album after all these years. Um, and I'd say it was, in the end, probably a little bit better than what what I was expecting, maybe. Um, quite often with, with albums, it, it's, it, it's the kind of the, the big hits that end up being a being my favourite, but with this one, it's, it's not. It's not the case. Um, as I said during the, the, you know, the review, there were some songs there that I'd never heard of um, that I actually quite, quite liked, um, and I thought three out of the four lot of songs at the end were particularly good as well. Um, so, yeah, overall, actually, I found that I think that was a bit of a success for me, really. So, quite, quite enjoyed it to a certain extent. What about you? Um, yeah, I like you. I think I said an instruction where I knew a lot of Coldplay. I really like Coldplay, even if a lot of people don't. But like you never listened to a, a whole album before. I was just one of those. There's always been songs of theirs that I would listen to and, and never done um, done an album. And I generally thought from the couple of songs I knew on here, I thought, oh, there's no way there's going to be anything that's probably going to be better than the ones I knew already. And I think what well, I was surprised by that, there, there were a couple on there. I enjoyed just as much as the ones that I knew. And I said it, even though it didn't wow me or blew me away and stuff, apart from the whole space feel, so I said that was really cool. Um, it, it was just overall, I can really just sort of nice album um, to listen to. I said not too many over memorable songs, but no real bad songs in there either. Just a sort of nice, good, relaxing album to listen to. And I said, I will listen to again, because it's always, we've said it before, something's good to listen to it when you don't feel you have to write or make notes or think about it and just listen to to it as it's been intended to listen to. So I think it could be, I think it probably improve for me if I get to listen to it without overthinking about it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we've, got a, we've got a tough job, haven't we? So, you know, we've got to <laughs> sit in there, getting those notes down and really overthinking things. So, yeah, yeah, listen to the album, relax, don't worry about it you'll enjoy it more so um yeah keep the requests coming in remember we you also have the opportunity to feature on our channel if you so wish you can uh, join us in the introductory part where you can introduce your song you've chosen um so yeah keep the requests coming in and thank you very much for watching we'll see you again soon for the next one goodbye <laughs>